Hello, and I cannot believe we are ready for another garden tour. It is May 15th, and things are coming along really, really good. I'm really excited. I'm going to start on this end where my chair garden is and kind of walk through. Here, I'm slowly starting to get things in here, but there's still a lot that has to be done. This is done, but I have to start staking up my tomatoes, and look at these. This is such a miracle on how many are on this little plant and that plant is I believe it's from last year and it came up from the bottom from the rootstock so I'm leaving it and then of course my beans look at, this. Look at the beans the scarlet runner beans I put in there so that is doing really good this has to be pulled out this I planted basically I haven't done too much I just put a yellow squash in here and I cover it in the beginning just so the birds won't eat the leaves and we'll see what happens Watermelon, I don't know how it's going to do, but I'm trying to protect it and make it think it's warmer at night than it is. Though we are quite warm right now for the past few days during the day, our nights are still in the low 50s, sometimes just at 50, which is not quite warm enough for the watermelon out here. I am so jazzed on the truck bed. Considering what I went through when I started planting all that, unbelievable. The squirrels would jump in. They were digging the dickens out of it. I'd be planting. They'd be digging in the afternoon. The tool has kept them out 100%. So I just hope it continues to work, but so far so good. It has worked for over a week now. And look at this. The only issue is now is I've got a field of Swiss chard. So I want to move some of it and dig some of it in because I want this to be taken over by squash. I'm hoping to have a lot of storing squash on this. So I kind of can prep for the winter and have squash that I can grab or squash that I can even freeze. I've got shark fin melon in the blue bucket. I've got uh, spaghetti squash in the yellow bucket. There's butternut squash that really got chewed bad by the squirrels, but it's making a comeback we'll see in the orange bucket. I've got a hybrid in the back in the dark, dark blue bucket, and I still have to do the two reds and the purple. I hope to get the spaghetti squash in today. My pomegranate is doing fantastic. Let's walk over. I haven't seen the ponds today. I haven't done anything new here. This is because the raccoons tore everything apart, and I thought, well, I'll come and do this later. So, oh. Oh, we, this is a first. Hmm. That's got a very clean cut. And I did not do any trimming here. So this may be deer. It might have come in here to grab something and the wire was there. So we know we have to redo a pump now. Raccoons tore this apart. You know about the raccoons. Somebody dumped raccoons. They tore this one apart too, but it's starting to come back. You can see the water has cleared up. Everything's coming back so I can get my pump put in there really good. So I'll work on this. The succulents are doing fa fabulous. I've been putting little tiny succulents all the way around and then walking onions there. It's been doing really good. Look at that. This is that hummingbird I made over a year ago. Isn't that cool? Out of a stuffed animal. I'm gonna leave that because it's my first project covering a stuffed animal because I have a whole lot more projects I'm gonna do. That was a cutting uh, of uh, rosemary, and I put that there, and that's some elephant food. And I'm gonna get something else in here. I might put another pomegranate, because boy, are they happy and full of fruit here. And these are seedlings that I grew, looking underneath there. I've already got fruit coming up. So I think I'm going to put another one there. And then here, I'm gonna have to go through my meadow. This is what I call the meadow, and get rid of all this. I'm gonna compost it. All the weeds will go into a tote. I'm still working on totes, of course. So the bottom of the totes, I usually use branches from trees. I use weeds. Even sometimes now I tear up cardboard and put that in, whatever I've got to save on soil. So because the soil on the bottom, they're not gonna reach the plants. So I'm gonna start cleaning up this and I think I will have to clean up in there later. I'm gonna get to this later here. Yeah, that came out of my chair garden, and that is some sort of brassica hybrid. Could even be a broccoli, but something ate it on the top. I would think if it was a squirrel, it would have eaten more of the leaves and torn them off. Because they're chomped, you can see they're chomped. I think the deer came through here last night, which makes sense. So they wandered up there and then bit through something and bit through my solar panel, which we fixed wires before, we've cut through them. 
And that, I'm not going to worry about it because I have so much, so I'm going to leave that. I've got a pomegranate back there, sugar cane. I've got walking onions in a bucket. Got some squash put through here. I may have flowers back there. Yes, I think I do. I put some flower seeds there. So we'll see how this goes. I want to plant this up as time goes on, but the first thing I want to do are the vegetables. I have gotten to pretty much all of these. This I will take out eventually and put another squash in there. That's last year's squash. It's not doing anything. That one is, is a tomato that came up. I'm going to leave that because it's got some Swiss chard and there's too many. So I'm going to pull some of the Swiss chard out go ahead and leave the garlic chives in there and then let the tomato plant do its thing because I've got a lot of squash planted and we've been just taking in I who knows what I've got here because I haven't picked squash yesterday I didn't but look at this beautiful plants I come through here look at that isn't that gorgeous that one's a newer plant have a cover just with a 99 cent store basket see they're starting to droop because we're going to be oh look at that really really hot today just wrap some tool around that. Had the squirrel coming through here in the beginning. So I just draped the tool, literally draped it. I was going to stake it better, but this worked. This is doing really good. I trimmed all these back the other day and they're doing good, but I'm wondering if I want to chop this out. If I pull it out, I could disturb this one. And this one is doing really, really nice. So I'm not sure. I'll keep an eye on it in the next couple days and I may take the second one out and leave the one right now. This is doing wonderful. This is the box garden. Look at that. Isn't that amazing how well this is doing? And we've been picking zucchini like constantly. Tomatoes doing really good. Just a cardboard box sitting out in the open. And then of course I've got the peppers. And then look at this, sun golds. We got sun golds everywhere. We now have sun golds coming up everywhere. That's so fun. And radishes, look. I have radishes. These I spaced out perfectly, the radishes, the way I wanted them because I started the seeds in a plastic bag. And then I could just place the seeds that had a little tail of a root starting and then I know exactly where it's going to come up. I've got the eggplant, actually. Yes, we have eggplant starting and then I have cucumbers. We've been picking cucumbers. Then this is the 100s. Isn't this gorgeous? This plant is getting massive and that's what I want. I want it to get really, really big and then start throwing a lot of fruit. It's got a lot of flowers, so it's doing fantastic. Russian red kale, isn't that gorgeous? More cucumbers, I, let's see, I picked some, oh wow. Oh, I've got to get these off because I picked some the other day. Okay, and then I've got the watermelon. Now this watermelon is doing really, really well. Better than the other one. Also left in the paper cup, but I po you know, poked the bottom out of the paper cup. That's how I grow a lot of plants. It doesn't disturb them. They don't even know they've been transplanted. So that one's doing really good. Now here, I haven't quite gotten to this yet. I put a tomato here in this pot because it came up on its own. And I thought, you know, instead of trying to transplant it, it's got big, big holes. It can go straight into the bottom of the tote. I may not do anything to this tote at all. And then I'm going to plant in the buckets. And I just started these cucumbers. Look at this. But they're still not growing really good because our nights are too cool. So let's kind of walk through quickly here because this is the one I'm going to grab my wheelbarrow. And I'm going to start going through all this very quickly. All this I want to gut because last year I did not. I left it and let whatever was in here grow and we got a lot of food. But this year I want to concentrate on a lot of squash that I can share with my neighbors and my family, of course. So I'm going to get that going and then this, this is amazing. Yellow, uh-oh, this has to come off, see? Probably the rabbit. I've got a rabbit that lives here so we'll get that off and have that for dinner tonight. Purple tree colored in a purple bucket. Look at that. So let's keep walking. Eggplant. And then, like I said, I've got to go through. Celery is going to get its own buckets for now on. I've got peppers back there. Now that's in a grow bag. I have to be careful with grow bags. I've been trying grow bags and a lot of the plants look so stressed that I've been transferring them out of the grow bags and putting them into something else. But I went ahead and put this here because peppers don't mind getting dry, but other plants don't like it. And we're just too hot and dry here. Isn't this gorgeous? This plant's been growing now for over two years. Look at that. Just full. This is a black cobra. They start off green, then they turn black, and then they turn red. In the same pot, 
All I do is give it some compost tea once in a while, and that is it. Like I said, nothing is done here. I'm going to pull all the tool off here. But I'm going through totes little by little. I can't even show you this. And I've got my work table here now. Years ago, I used to put styrofoam in there just on the very bottom because soil was so expensive and I didn't have a lot of stuff to put in it. I've been pulling the styrofoam out. I had it in the chair garden in a couple of them. That was the only place I did it. But it doesn't do anything. I know some countries actually use that on the bottom. Look at this. The only issue was there were a lot of worms hiding, so I had to let them sit and let the worms and the critters get out. Now I can trash that. I don't want to bother with styrofoam. I'd rather put cardboard inside on the bottom. Green sorrel, red vein sorrel. I'm going to leave this. This is a good place for it. I don't like those planters. Then I've got some more of the purple tree colors. I'm doing a lot of cuttings on that. Nothing here, nothing new, more green sorrel. Anything you see brown, even the weeds are going to all be picked and all go back in these totes. I'm trying to get seeds growing really quick so I can get a lot of squash here. The lettuce I will keep up here. It's really good to drape tool and then I get a lot of lettuce. I want to grow a ton of lettuce this year. So all in all, like I said, I haven't really gotten to this, but I'm kind of now analyzing what I'm going to do here. Let me step back. I've got basil that grew all winter because it got tricked because it's growing in a plastic cup. So it thought it was warmer than it was, so it grew all winter. I'm thinking of basil, eggplant, and tomatoes. That's what I'm thinking, we'll see. And notice the chairs, these are folding chairs. I got those at Walmart Home Delivery with groceries for $10. I think they went up a little bit. But you can use the metal chairs. I mean, that's been on there now for over a year. And I just have like a board across it, and it works fantastic. It holds three toads. You can't beat that. Okay, let's go in the front yard. Now we're in the front yard. Well, I haven't done anything. Been slowly moving things. There's no more flower pots with soil. That's all gone. And thinking about what I'm going to put here. I'm almost thinking peppers. Since peppers don't like the hot afternoon heat, some of them, and they burn, the fruit burns, I'm thinking of putting peppers in here. Now here... I'm going to put tomatoes and zucchini or some sort of squash. But my dilemma is these trees have gotten so huge, they are creating far more shade every year. So I have to think about what I'm going to plant every year because this has got its own microclimate. Now, I could put more ginger and turmeric here. And that is a thought. We've got the finger limes. Look at that. And that's something, as soon as we figured out that the pine trees got in there, and we moved it and broke the pine trees out of there. The finger limes just took off and now we have a lot of fruit again. I've got to get that out. I don't want the celery in there at all. So I have to get that out right away. I'm going to do a whole thing on celery. Geraniums are doing really good. These are all cuttings and I want to move them into my bird garden. Look at the geraniums here. Cuttings that have taken off. And yeah, here I'm not sure. I was going to stack it and make this vertical, but I think I'm gonna do something else with it when I get to it. So like I said, all in all, everything's the same. Now this got broke. We did have wind, so it could have broke by the wind since nothing ate it. I've been leaving a lot of seeds for the wildlife because there's no food. Flat out, no, no food. And look at this, purple tree colored. In that little pot that's growing in there, so I'm gonna get that out and transplant it somewhere else. This is a combination of broccoli and tree-colored cuttings, and I'm going to gut the table. I decided I'm done with the table. Fig leaf tree. Fig tree goes. I don't want any fig trees from seeds. I prefer to do cuttings because when you take it off a good tree, you get that tree and you know what you've got. This I don't know. We've had bad ones in the past. So here I've got walking onions and mint, but I am going to change things up. This is a waste. These are too shallow. These are really for maybe small herbs or flowers. And I'm debating whether I'm going to go ginger. Maybe I can do peppers, but I've got a different container I'm going to use. And I think I'm going to gut that all and put something else there. So let's keep going. You know, a garden is something that is forever being changed, forever working, forever a project. You don't have to get it done right away. And little by little, I leave a chair here. I've been working in here. I have decided for now to go with geraniums. And then if they get too big, I can pull them out and put them somewhere else. I'm probably going to remove the tool, but it looks so good. It's been on there for over a year. 
The first one lasted for what, almost three years. So I do want to move the tool, but it looks really good. I mean, it faded a little bit and got a little bit light. It looks lighter on camera than it really is. It's uh, not that light. And nothing eats geranium. And I've been putting it in there and I've got a mad method of how it's growing because it's going to grow much better than the onions and garlic chives, even though I still have onions and garlic chives growing there. But I think it'll look nice to have the flowers. It'll give places for lizards to hide in. And one last thing for me to take care of, and I can concentrate more on bigger things, like on this table that's probably going to crumble away. Somebody gave it to me years ago. All right, now we're going to turn around and look at the ginger and turmeric and stevia. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We do not have warm enough nights for ginger and turmeric yet. Probably won't come up until maybe the middle of June. Though we're, we have days that get quite warm, just not warm enough for ginger and turmeric. The moment the nights are in the upper 50s, it will take off. But look what I did here. This is sunflower. Probably was in the soil I brought here. I've got a zinnia growing in with my stevia. The ste and another zinnia. So that's doing really good. I think this is a tomatillo. Everything has got tomatillo. So the seeds are so fine. And if I borrow some soil from another tote or another area in the garden, I end up with tomatillo. So I'm going to leave that right now. It's not hurting anything. And I can decide what I'm going to do. Here I had turmeric growing in here. I will never grow turmeric in a tote like this again. I've talked about in my other videos why it doesn't work because turmeric and ginger do not grow in the same way. So knowing that, I can make my life easier by not growing turmeric in there. I can grow ginger in there and I may put some ginger in there, but if I grow turmeric, it's going to be like what this is. This is turmeric. I mark those in pink and I mark the ginger in these lime green colored ones just because of the way you have to harvest it. All right, so let's go now into the bird garden. Now I am in my bird garden. I have not gotten to this large thing yet. I still dump kitchen scraps in here when I'm not sure where to put them, but I'm going to take from that because that's going to be valuable compost just by sitting in there and letting the earthworms and everything break it down. It looks like a wild jungle, and I'm still working on this. I've got a lot of ideas, but I have been working in the bird garden now. Isn't this beautiful? I'm making sure I have paths so I can get around in different areas. This is this was a cutting off the old dinosaur kale that used to be back there that made it to about five years old, but that means this is older because this is a cutting that got really big. And I'll be doing more cuttings off of that because this is my original plant. I haven't even bought any dinosaur kale in so many years. These are hybrids. That's a tree collard, but this is a hybrid. Probably crossed with broccoli. It, who knows what it's hybrid with, hybridized with. But the thing is, it's beautiful and that's in the ground. It's getting top heavy. So we'll see what happens as it goes. And then some tomatoes came up here. Walking onions here. Oh, I know what this is. Zinnias. You know what I do when the yellow zinnias have the flowers, like here? I've been picking the seeds and I throw them around. So I end up with zinnias coming up everywhere. But let's look at the bird garden. This is work in progress. My daughter got that for Mother's Day for me. That is beautiful. It's a faucet and it's metal. And then at night, it lights up. It's a solar light. So it looks like water is coming out of the faucets at night. It's absolutely beautiful. I am very excited with my bird room. This is in the bird garden. And I love my fountains. I've got the rock one there that birds come to all day. I've got the bowl back there with the cup. I want to change that out a little bit. There's a bucket. I'm setting up flowers. Look at this. My polka dot plants. Even got purslane in there. Isn't this gorgeous? So I'm starting to set up in here because I want this to be a bird haven. The birds can come in here. It's, this is that gazebo that Gary got in the trash. And we cross-beamed the whole thing with wood. Well, I've been doing that actually myself. Little by little, I tell them to bring me up the longest branches you've got. And I zip tie them together. I wrap them with wire because this stops hawks. I have not had a hawk come down here at all. The hawks swoop. They actually will swoop in, but if they can't swoop, 
and do a clean swoop then they won't bother and they haven't bothered I'm even going to put some more I've got more in the back see how I'm cross beaming it and this is stopping everything I've got my rose cuttings I did there's one back there all cuttings off of a rose plant I've got so this is coming along the way I want but I'm going to do a whole lot more in here put the bowls of food out all day for the birds this one I've got to clean up I can see this morning I haven't been in, out in the garden you're, you're with me for the first time mint all over the ground I'm going to redo all this and I want to have a clear shot so I can see my ball back there the ball fountain because the birds love taking a bath and I absolutely love getting photographs of them so this is coming along and I think I'll have this done fairly quick it's almost done and it looks gorgeous. I am so happy with it. And I've got so many more solar fountain projects to do. There's the ball. And I want to be able to see it. That's one of my oldest fountains. That one is electric. I bought it at a thrift store for like $15 on my birthday many years ago. So like I said, all in all here, I haven't done anything. This is all completely untouched. Still have all the baby walking onions on the top there. You know, I've never even looked to see if I have sweet potatoes in here. That's sweet potato, see? And this is salvia. Is, so isn't that cool? Sage, actually. It is salvia, but it's sage. And then here is where I'm starting to plant purple tree colored. This is in the ground. It looks like it's in a pot, but none of them are in pots. The pots on the bottom are either have massive holes or the pots have been taken out on the bottom. But I want to make sure that when I water these plants, it goes directly to the roots. It doesn't run off. So this is working out fantastic. I'll probably get rid of this. I'm not real thrilled with this. Look, seeds fell in there. And for years, this plant's been there. It's going to be so happy when I pull it out and stick it in the ground. I've got some four o'clocks here. Look how big they are. See, they throw the red flowers and then the hummingbirds feed on that. This I'm going to put some eggplant in. I decided I'm going to throw some more leaves in here. Leave it and then put buckets or containers in here, it could be flower pots, and put the eggplant in there with big holes on the bottom so they can send their roots in. This is gonna go, this is that bird cage, it's gonna, if I don't take it out soon, it's gonna go, it's already tipping. So that's gonna go because I'm gonna put a whole field of totes here. I wanna get a lot more food growing this year, and I wanna be diligent on that. So I wanna be able to take a lot that I like and slice it up and throw it in the freezer. You can also dry a lot, but I'm going to freeze a lot. I'm also going to concentrate here in Southern California to get a lot of the plants that continue to grow over the winter. So that's what I'm going to work on too. I've got celery. I'm going to either decide to keep celery in there or move it. I've got some onions growing in there, mint, and then my purple collard, which I probably will concentrate on that. Leave that there, but look at all the cuttings I can do off of this. I can propagate so many off of this. The reason I like this one is look how deep red it is. Sometimes you start to grow them and then they turn green and this one has got so much color, which means it's got so many nutrients for us. So I want to get some good cuttings off of that. And then of course you don't plant papaya. <laughs> you don't plant papaya in an 18 gallon tote. It really stretched that tote. Isn't that amazing? I, of course, know that the roots have left and gone into the ground, and it's doing so well I wouldn't even try to transplant it. We get papayas off of this constantly, and this is just so beautiful. So that's it for in here. So let's go into the rainbow garden. So now we're entering the rainbow garden. Isn't this cool? This is last year's plant. For now, I'm just going to leave it. It's actually growing through the fence from the bucket on the other side. I put strawberries in here, and I'm really, really thinking of pulling this out. See, it's forcing itself to grow a lot of flowers. The problem is here in Southern California, I mean, we're supposed to be like we were close to 100 yesterday. And though it's only going to be a couple days of warm weather, when it gets really hot, without a drip system, and I can make my own drip system, it, this isn't really going to do well here. I know it's open and it may be on the ground would be better but I just tried different places with grow pots and different things. And I know a lot of you love your grow pots. I have so many ideas on how I can make the grow pot work. But here's the thing. I can add my water in there. There's lots of methods of adding water and keeping water in there for the plant. But why should I knock myself out with all my methods I've got going on in my head when I can grow in a tote? and have all the stuff I want growing in totes. And it works perfect here in Southern California. Absolutely perfect. I can't believe we made the circle already. 
So I'm not going to over bother with grow bags. There'll be places I'll put a grow bag. Like I said, the strawberries are doing really, really well. But as far as what works for me, yes, you can get the more expensive ones, but then why would I want to get the more expensive grow bags when I can get a tote? I bought some last night. They were on sale for $6.50. Walmart periodically throws them on sale. If you can't get them at the store, please go online, go to walmart.com. I am not affiliated with them in any way. Oh, cool. In any way. But the point is they put, Sterilite puts them on sale and they're free shipping when they put them on there and they go and come really quick. And they had that purple one again that looks like an eggplant color. My daughter went and bought more. My gosh, she's got a field of them. I haven't been over there, but she put up this short and all I see is a field of totes. So this is a girl that swore she would not grow in totes. You know what she said to me? Like a lot of people say, it costs a lot of money to buy soil and fill it up. And it does. But when I told her, stop filling it up with soil, you've got trees and everything. Use the trees on the from the bottom and you've got collard now growing like mad. I gave her cuttings like this and she's got it all over the yard. Even her dogs love purple tree collard. Won't eat the green, but they like the purple. I said, start cleaning up the ground, throwing that in there. And then on the top, that's all you do is put whatever soil you want. So she has got stuff growing everywhere now. So as going back to grow bags, if you're doing good with them, I want you to use them, okay? And your area may be far different than us, but we are dry. We have a canyon breeze, as you can see, which we did not have 10 years ago, which is interesting. And things have changed and the climate's changed a little bit. So this works. This retains water. I put the holes up from the bottom. Every container has to have holes. You have to have drainage, all right? Remember that because if it doesn't drain, it will rot the plant. But you can put the holes above. You can leave an inch to two inches of water in there. If the plant doesn't want it, the plant will pull its roots up. It won't use it. And this retains water where I don't have to water every day. I water every other day, sometimes in the hottest days every other day. So it works for me. Papayas are doing good. They're making a comeback as you probably saw in the last garden tour. A lot of them lost their leaves. It was so cold. There were nights that froze that they didn't like it. Again, keep in mind, I told you we've got a constant breeze that we never had before. I blame that on all the shopping centers and cement that they've put. It comes up, it creates heat, and it must be coming up to the canyon now because years ago, there was like little stores and there wasn't a whole lot of shopping centers. So I don't know. I really don't know what's causing it. It's just a theory. But regardless, we have a lot of draft. And when it comes up cold weather, cold wind, it really hurts the papayas. But all in all, they're making a comeback. I've got some more papayas I planted back there. Now the broccoli there is doing really good. I can walk over there for a minute. I moved some broccoli out of my rainbow garden. That one's doing really, really well. Is there any broccoli? I've been eating it myself. Here's a nice one. I'll take that in for Kitty. She loves broccoli. That's been doing really well. And that one's been doing really, really well. And though I trim this way back, I have a feeling this is a deer path. The deer sleep in the rosemary sometimes and they come up the hillside here. And I think they ate some of that. And if it continues to get eaten, yes, I could throw tool on it right away and stop it. I may just move this one down there because it seems like they're kind of lazy. They kind of just walk through the deer down the path and keep going that way and then they chomp on my fountains. But here they stop because they're sleeping there and they've got food right next to them. I'll decide what I'm going to do. Yeah, I've got another box. I'm debating on putting that in the truck bed or I'll just tear it up and throw it in the tote. Strawberries. Uh, we'll do that on a nature walk. I have stories about strawberries now. Doing really well. And then my potato mint. I've got that down there. And then I've got potato mint here. I cleaned it all out and it's all coming up. I don't want this. This is tomato. See that? And we, I don't know if I want the roly pulleys in there. Go. Cool. This is really cool because I didn't even use any to eat. I replanted it. They look like little potatoes and you can eat them raw or cooked and they taste like potatoes. So I'm going to have that full of potato mint. That will be full of potato mint. 
and that's going to be full of potato. It's a plant that's in the mint family, but you can eat it raw or cooked. This I just moved here. And I'm going to be getting to this any day now because now I've set up my work area. I've got my cord out. I've got my soldering iron out. I've been working on different projects right here on the table. And it's just been great. So any day I'm going to sit here and think, okay, it's time to get that done. Look at my my planters. I love these planters. You don't have to go three high. You could go just two high and plant in them. And let me tell you something. They don't tip when they have plants in them. Somebody said, oh, they may tip. This is top heavy. This is not going to tip. That's probably going to go on my deck. And that one will probably go on the deck. Because here I think I want to stay with buckets and different things. But I just, just love making planters. So anyways, now i got a work table and I'll take you with me. Because there'll be times I'll sit down here and work on a solar fountain. I have ideas on this one. I have ideas on that one too. And I might just turn on the camera and go live and let you watch me. Look at this. This is for the butterflies. It's the milkweed. More flowers I'm going to plant. Now this has been really good. I have to set this one up. I just put holes in my container. This is like a little greenhouse. And what I love about this is I can start my seeds out here. This was actually a pepper that we bought at the grocery store and I threw the seeds in there. This is Black Beauty Zucchini. It's already used to being outside and now I planted some of these already. This is yellow squash. I can lift it up with the tool. You know how I do the tool? I took it over to the truck bed. I planted the yellow squash. Actually it was in the chair garden what I wanted. Wait a minute. Is that yellow squash or spaghetti squash? No, that's yellow squash. And I planted it in the chair garden and then I just dropped them back in with the tool and all and put them back here. And it worked out fantastic. The spaghetti squash is behind me at the other workstation I work at. So this has been good and I keep a cover on it so the birds won't get in there and nibble on the new seedlings. And yes, we got a gazebo. Now this was set up, keep in mind, before the gazebo. It didn't mind the sun. So it worked out really good. I did it last year. Yes, we got a gazebo. I thought, you know, if I'm going to work out here this summer on projects, I might as well have something that I can sit under because it's just so sunny. And then I can set up a camera and you guys can watch me do stuff. And then the pizza garden. Pizza garden is doing wonderful. My sage, look at this. I got tricolored sage. This is that cutting I did last year is massive. I've got the regular sage, my walking onions. See how they're walking? They're starting there and then they're going to pop on the top. I've got basil in there and I see a tomato down there. I've got purple and green basil. I've got rosemary. I've got my thyme growing. I have peppers from last year's plant. I know I was thinking, should I take it out? And I thought, no, it's making a comeback. I'm going to leave it. I think there's a tomato and there's a tomato plant back there too. So everything I'm really, really happy with. I really like the rainbow garden because it kind of makes me it makes me smile. I love color. Even as a kid, they'd ask me, what's your favorite color? I never had a favorite color. I like all colors. Every color means something, even black and white. It means something. So that's it. So I think I've taken you everywhere. We're going to end it here because we've gone, well, we've gone everywhere. We started there. Isn't that gorgeous? That tomato plant back there in the tote. Please, if you haven't start, tried totes and you want a garden, get one tote. You could do a bucket too. But get one tote and try it. You have nothing to lose. What is it, a few bucks? Walmart has them in the stores here for now they raise the price because oil has gone up and plastic's gone up. And of course, your gas prices have gone up. So everything, it causes everything to go up. So now they're like six, the other day I was there, there were $6.98. But you can find them online sometimes cheaper. Get the ones that flex a little bit. When they flex, they last for years and years. My chair garden, if you go back and watch it, two years ago, I set the chair garden up. Not one had to be changed out. Not one has cracked. The chairs, some of them are over 30 years old, and they're, it's going strong. Try it. And if you don't want a chair, you could use a ladder with some bricks, cement blocks. There's so many ways to get it off the ground. Or just put it on the ground, like that tomato plant, and that will work too. I have to just be careful with the tree roots. That's all. So that's why I like keeping the holes up. And then I have to deal with rabbits that are all over. So I like putting things on chairs. 
and then rabbits don't eat everything. So I think I've talked enough. We've zipped around. We got to see everything. I'm going back to work because I have so many projects I want to work on. And I already started some. See, I painted my basket. And it'll look nice once there's soil in there. It's actually a trash can that was pink. So I brushed it and I made it kind of look a brown. I might go over it one more time. I'm just constantly doing things. And these, a lot of you have asked about these light bulbs. They had them at the dollar store two years ago for a dollar. Then they raised them earlier in the year, like weeks and weeks ago, to $1.50. And now apparently they raised them to $2. Yeah, $2 seems like a lot of money for a little solar light. But let me tell you something. Some of these are three years old and they're still going strong. So I like them. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going back to work. And don't forget, look at the pepinos and the squash. Next cool zucchini. Don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye bye. This off before they're. Yep. Something took a nip, so I want to be the one to finish it on a year old plant. And rot your broccoli. And off she goes.